Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted, with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hi, Steve McKee. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting, Life Unscripted. I am so grateful to have you here this wonderful evening, uh, here to talk about how our audience can really uh, mastering the pivot. Uh, we talked just before we hit the go button, a little bit about how a lot of businesses are having to contemplate pivoting. Uh, what does that look like? How do we go forward and truly succeed in these very uncertain different times? Staying on a straight course is not always or often not the best course of action. And you've helped plenty of businesses do that as well as have a new book that just hit the market, Turns, Where Business is Won or Lost, as well as your other book, uh, When Growth Stalls, How It Happened, Why You're Stuck, and What to Do About It. Mm -hmm. Another great book. Uh, but welcome to Savvy. Great. Thanks to be here. Uh, it's great to be here, Christine. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> you bet. So tell me, what, what even led you to write your second book? Well, um, it's really interesting because you you sort of referred to it. My company does specialize in we, what we call working with stalled, stuck, and stale brands who are in need of a turn. And so I set out to write a book about uh, turnarounds, corporate turnarounds. And I thought, well, that book's been written once or twice. So, <laughs> so what you know, what new do I have to bring to the party? And it, it I just got fascinated with the whole concept of the root word turns hmm. and how turns throughout history have affected us. And so I spent about a year just kind of taking a deep dive, going down rabbit trails of turns. I first studied turns in the physical world, like the physics of turns. Mm -hmm. And that leads you to turns in the sporting world and turns in the hist in history and turns in the political world and turns everywhere. And it's like, this mm -hmm. is a fascinating subject. Yeah. And so I was able to divine out of that um, a number of principles that we use uh, for our clients in business. And that's where turns where business is won and lost came from. Interesting. Do turns often come about with a pattern behind them? Because I know if you're successful, and I, I've seen this in different layers of my life where I'll be very successful at something. Let's say I'm doing a new form of exercise. It works great for the first <laughs> six months. And then you stop having results. And it's like, yeah. you have to make that turn and do something different. Do you see the same thing happen in business? Yeah. And it's really interesting because the, um, Everything in the universe is continually turning. It's one of the things I learned. Literally everything in the universe is continually turning, which includes business because it's in the universe. And mm -hmm. so it's going to turn and you can either turn with it yeah. or you can, you know, I used to think that that life and business was a series of straightaways mm -hmm. occasionally interrupted by turns. And I've come to the conclusion that life is a series of turns occasionally interrupted by smooth stretches of road. So turns are a fact of life. And in business, one of the ways of thinking about the art of business, it's um, initiating and mastering the turn. That's mm -hmm. where, that really is where business is won and lost. Because when things are going, when things are going metaphorically straight, mm -hmm. they're predictable, things aren't changing. Yeah, It's when there's a new technology or when there's a recession or wh whatever the turn might be uh, mm -hmm. where we win or we lose. Yeah. So is it in those great, in those great turns, or as I like to call them pivots, is it when you have the potential for the most growth? You have the potential. It's the most dangerous uh, moment uh, because you have the potential for the most growth. You have also the potential of crashing and Great. burning. And mm. if you think about just the metaphor of an of, of a of a race car, turn um, races really are run and lost in the turns. You know, it's how you navigate those turns. But that's also where crashes happen, wow. and so that's why it's important for us to learn about them. So, what do you say to a business that say at this moment they realize they do have to pivot or make a turn as things are very fast changing with the launch of AI and all that? Where do they begin to realize what turn do I make? How do I decipher the best pivot to make? Where do they begin to look to make the best strategy in their turns? First of all, if they realize that, that's a great place to be because a lot of companies don't. So, realizing the need for a turn is is very important. We talk about, uh, and this is a whole chapter in the book, about the various forces involved in a turn. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the physical world, you've got gravity and friction and inertia and momentum and, and lean and all these sorts of things. Every one of those has an analog in business. And so if you're a, if you're a company that's either sensing a turn or sensing the need for a turn, mm -hmm. um, one helpful exercise can be to analogize those things. What are, what are the points of friction we're experiencing today? Where is our momentum being slowed? Where do we need to pick up momentum? Mm -hmm. where, where is the danger of us running off the road or being run off the road? What are the conditions out there? You know, is it raining? How are the tires on our car? I'm speaking metaphorically, but all those things 
a, a business person can dwell in. We will mm-hmm. often counsel people go into a, a, a conference room mm-hmm. with a whiteboard, order box lunches and th- and talk th- through this concept of the turn in mm-hmm. terms of your current circumstances. And it's really remarkable how enlightening that can be. Mm-hmm. You know what this recalls for me, Steve, is many years ago, I was doing um, events. Um, I was mostly doing my interviews audio wise, but we would also do uh, speaking events and bring in speakers that were often guests in the past. And we'd do these large speaking events of 10, 15 people, all that jazz. And I remember, and one of those last events we did, um, the people who set up the room for us or set up like a stage, they put up a stage and two chairs, flowers in the middle, kind of like, you know, an Oprah show, and then a bunch of chairs facing the stage. I'm like, what are you doing? No, 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 no. This is totally wrong. And my husband's like, well, you know, that's a, that's a really interesting idea. Maybe we should consider that. And <laughs> I remember thinking, well, that's absurd. What are you talking about? Well, later on that night, when I was looking at pictures, because we had to rearrange the whole room for the speaking event. Um, I remember thinking, well, this could be something. And it turned into a very successful launch for, for Savvy, where we did live interviews in front of an audience kind of like an Oprah show, but, you know, uh, where we combined networking events at the tail end and had sponsors there, the whole jazz. It turned into a whole interesting animal based on that mistake. And so yes. that was a pivotal pivotal turn for us. And that's one of the things that, that's a beautiful story. One of the things that that I'm trying to make people aware of is that turns really happen every single day. Mm-hmm. There, Some of them, most of them are inconsequential, mm-hmm. um, but you never know, like, if if on the way to work, if there's a detour and you have to take a different route, that's going to mm-hmm. change the world in some way. You, know, you might yeah. run into a new employee at the at the new coffee shop that you go to, or you might be late to a meeting and that changes things. And so mm-hmm. those providential or serendipitous happenings like you just described mm-hmm. are fabulous. If uh, you have your antenna up, and that, mm-hmm. really, again, that's the reason I wrote the book is get your antenna up and start paying attention. Mm -hmm. to these turns because you never know where the opportunity is going to be. Wow. This recalls for me, a guest we had on a long time ago that was talking about opportunities. And he was basically like in life and business, there's opportunities flourishing everywhere. It's just that most people are so inside of their, their realm of day-to-day busyness that they're not catching them. And, 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 you know, one example, many years ago, it was a really snowy day and my car got snowed in, in New York and I couldn't get it out, but there was at the end of the block, um, what do you call it? Uh, A truck shoveling out the school, um, parking lot. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to go ask him if he'll help shovel out my car. I mean, all you can do is say no. So I went over and I asked him, Hey, I, I know you're, you're doing this for the school in the city, but could you help me out? And I'll, I'll give you some money if you want. He's like, I'm not allowed to take your money. I'll see what I can do. Well, I went to take care of an errand, came back. My car was totally, you know, shoveled out. But That's the awesome. deal was there was an opportunity there that I, I felt uncomfortable about taking that. Oh, you know, I shouldn't do that. And da, da, da. But I thought, eh, what's the worst that could happen? They say no. Why not? Yeah. Well, you know, we're often counseled. Um, to, to try a different route to work in the morning. Cause yeah. most of us tend to take the same route to work every day. Mm-hmm. And it, when someone says, take a different route to work, you never know what you're going to see something different. And that could trigger all kinds of, of opportunities. So the beautiful thing about a turn is by definition, whether mm-hmm. you turn one degree or 180 degrees, the world just changed. Mm-hmm. Your view just changed. Your opportunities just changed. Your direction just changed. And so if you're, if you're alert, first of all, we're often forced into turns. So recognizing mm-hmm. that things just changed, <laughs> yeah. I better reevaluate this. That's important. But recognizing that you can always initiate a new turn mm. every day, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, you can always initiate a new turn. I think that's really empowering. It is because say you always go this route while well, you come around this way instead of this way. And not only um, do you change what you're seeing, but you might open yourself up to to the opportunity of seeing different people. Um, oh, I never saw that sign. Oh, they do the same type of work. They could be a vendor of art. You know, it's just like mm-hmm. that, um, opening your eyes to different things. Uh, yeah, and even, and it, even yeah. at different times of day, the lighting will be different. And so you will see things differently, which again is another metaphor for business. 
Interesting. Yeah, just a different um, tempos of day, you'll see different. That is such a great idea. Now, someone begins to say, okay, I'm going to change things up ever so slightly. I'm going to begin to ask those questions. Where am I missing the turns or the pivots? How can we grab some further opportunities that maybe we're not seeing? They begin to look at that, but where do they decide what's the best turn? Like, how do you make that differentiation? Well, uh, another chapter in the book is called the moment and it's mm-hmm. every turn has its, has its moment. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you could be premature. So that's an, one aspect of that decision is the timing. Mm-hmm. Is it premature? Should I wait? Are we past the opportunity? So that's a decision you have to make. Mm-hmm. And then of course, when we're considering making a turn, we think about what's going to change. We not put it in those terms, but we're, we're making a turn. And one of the mistakes that I think we often make is Um, we think about the immediate change, but we don't think about the subsequent consequences, the second and third and fourth order events. Interesting. Because that's where uh, things can really, you know, start to change. If you initiate, if you knock down that domino, Mm -hmm. there are other dominoes behind it. And one Mm -hmm. of the problems, you know, with our public policy is we tend to think of the first domino, not the subsequent dominoes. Um, Whether whether that's foreign policy or economic policy or whatever, same thing is true in business. The Mm. wise business leader spends as much time and effort and energy as possible considering those consequences while recognizing the principle of the moment, which Mm. is comes a moment where you have to make a decision. So, you know, it's, it's funny because as a consultant, I can't tell people what decision to make. All I can do is equip them with tools to make better decisions. And that's why I think this metaphor is so helpful. It is. I mean, one of the things I've been told I'm um, impulsive and I usually just, I got an idea. Boom, let's do it. And it would behoove me sometimes to like, let's slow down a bit and see all the domino effects of that one move. How might that work out instead of just launching? And now we got a whole set of other issues to deal with. Right. Although you did make that decision when you launched a podcast and there was a lot of positive dominoes that have come from it, right? Yeah, there was. Um, yeah. So dominoes work both ways, both positive <laughs> and negative. And yeah. that, that brings up another point that's kind of interesting is uh, people have asked me the difference between a good turn and a bad turn. And what's interesting about that is I don't think I've witnessed a turn that is all good or all bad because sometimes bad things happen to us. Mm -hmm. And then we look back and we say that was the best thing that ever happened. Or sometimes we might be, we might think, so a good thing that happened to me today was a cookie landed on my desk. Well, that's a good thing in the short term, (laughs) but probably not (laughs) such a good thing in the long term. Yeah. So maybe I shouldn't have uh, been. So again, that's the beautiful thing is, um, t- the turns are ever present. They're ever refreshing. We can always initiate new turns. And mm-hmm. so if we make a wrong turn, we make a wrong turn. Evaluate. We can always make another turn, right? Yeah. Evaluate. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. Learn from it. Uh, many years ago, I was working at a company and I think I was management in one area, but the new head came into this company and said, Hey, we'd like you to lay out a plan for this department that I'm part of. And silly me looking back, I realized I should have gotten all the heads involved, but because he asked me specifically, I put together this crazy plan, like 30 pages worked on it. Beautiful. Um, but when he shared it with the rest of the crew, they felt stint- stilted that they weren't part of it. And then I built some enemies. And of course, later on, if I had, you know, evaluated better before I got started, you know, I maybe would have done it different. Like, Hey guys, come on, let's see, what could we do to make this better? He, he tasked me with doing this. I'd like your feedback. Um, but you know, now evaluating that situation, I realized, okay, this is what I'll do next time when I come across something like that. Yeah. It's the old Thomas Edison quip. I'm going to get it wrong, but paraphrasing where he said, I haven't failed a thousand times. I've learned a thousand ways that don't work. Exactly. And, um, that's true in, in all of our lives. George Gilder, who's an economist, talks about how uh, in a capitalist market-based economy, even the failures mm-hmm. are successes because we all learn from the failures. Mm-hmm. And that, and so the more, the more companies that have failures, the better it is for all of us, which sounds kind of weird. Yeah. Um, now, when you say uh, the, the companies that have, well, the way I see it, the companies with the most failures are taking the greater risk and they in turn get the greater reward. If they when succeed. they succeed. Yeah. Yes. And when they fail, they get the greatest pain, but we all learn from it. Uh, yes. uh, Nassim Taleb, he he had a quote. He said, uh, America got strong b- because of high rates of bankruptcy. Mm. Like, wow, that's really fascinating. And so I mean, that, it's a, a little Machiavellian maybe because we don't <laughs> want to see anybody go bankrupt. We certainly don't no. want to go bankrupt ourselves. No. But how many mistakes have you made? How many mistakes have I made? Mm-hmm. 
that have made me a better person, made my company a better company. Yeah. Um, and that's that's just sort of the positive way of looking at wrong turns mm -hmm. rather than you make a wrong turn, you find yourself in an alley and you just sit there. Uh, yeah. No, back out, turn again, find out, Boom. find a way out. Yeah. yeah, because what you're saying is when someone says, what's a good turn or a bad turn, you're seeing it black and white. And yeah. there's so many gray areas like, okay, this wasn't a totally bad turn, but here's what you could do better. And so and it always leaves you to 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 do it a little bit better or to grow and say, okay, how do we pivot this so we do it a little better next time? And we are, so yes, we learn from our mm -hmm. mistakes, but again, the book has so much history in it mm -hmm. because when you look back on historical turns that are two or three or 400 years old, mm -hmm. we have a lot of perspective. We're not invested in them and mm -hmm. we can very easily see where they worked and where they didn't work. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to do with people is take them on a journey to look at history, history of business, history of philosophy, history of religion, history of, of war and mm -hmm. the various turns, because the more we immerse ourselves in that, the more we, the fewer mistakes we made, we're learning from yeah. the mistakes of others over the course of time. Yes. And it's so, it's so more enriching when you see life that way, instead of saying, Oh, I screwed up. It's like, well, let's see where you went right in some areas and where we can fix things and, and do them better next time. I love the idea of seeing how can we learn from our mistakes instead of seeing everything as bad? Um, yeah. It allows us the opportunity to grow. We could go on a lot longer. I know we can, but I don't want anyone to leave without getting a copy of Turns today. How can they do that? Uh, anywhere fine books are sold, Amazon or Barnes and Noble, Turns where business is won and lost, they can pick up a copy there and um, Kindle or hard copy, whatever they like. And if someone wants to work with your company, how can they get in touch with you, work with you? Very simply, um, my company is McKee Wallwork, but uh, stevemckee.com will take you there. It points right. to the site. And um, it's it's a really interesting thing. If you are if you go to our website, I would just challenge people. It's not about my company. It's mm -hmm. about you. Mm -hmm. And you're really going to enjoy the experience uh, because we want to get, we want to get people initiating their turns from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So we created a website to do that. That's great. How's that for a teaser? <laughs> Boom. That sounds awesome. Well, Steve, I just have to thank you again for coming to Savvy Broadcasting and sharing your great wisdom today. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Christina. It was fun. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more Savvy episodes and Savvy Biz Tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.